My name's Tony Wellington, and uh, Freak Nasty, I just wanted to ask you, uh, just how nasty does your freak on get? <laughs> What's my freak on? <laughs> yeah, Tony, the name means um, doesn't mean the same thing in America as it does in Europe. You know, for me, I, I was just into silly sci-fi cartoons and stuff, and it, it, when I came up with a name, and it sounded like a like a, one of them 50 superheroes, you know what I mean? Like Freak Nasty with some kind of silly superpowers. And then I come and played over here, and everyone's like, Freak Nasty, okay? <laughs> like I'm some ghetto, ghetto tech yeah, DJ like or something, you know? Yeah, so... And that there isn't that expression of, of you know, doing a nasty or... or yeah, it's not know, meant to be. You're not a, you're not a freak. Freaking, yeah. yeah. Freaking someone. Well, you're just disappointed about a million ladies out there. I know, I know. <laughs> people, come, people come in and say, yeah, I'm, I'm freak nasty. And everyone will be like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I kind of get it now. And, and no, it's not like that. So but uh, so we, thanks for clearing that up, Tony. <laughs> cool. My question, freak, is... Uh, how would you compare the London dubstep scene to the Pacific Coast dubstep scene? Hey, Teresa. Um, this, the scenes in London are kind of different in, in many ways, but one of them is that people tend to be just into that kind of music, and that's why the music evolves so fast. So you see people, if you go to a dubstep club, that's what you're going to hear. You go to a drum and bass club, that's what you're going to hear, unless it's specifically a, a big club that's known more for being the club than the DJs, that, that, than the sound of the music. Um, like Fabric, for example, you have drum and bass in one room and dubstep in another and breaks or garage or something in the other room. So um, what playing out here at the dubstep-oriented events that I like about it is that DJs are playing different stuff as well. I can come and play at something like that and play what I do, which is some dubstep, some kind of garagey stuff, some kind of bassline stuff and some just weird shit thrown in. And, uh, <laughs> and the dubstep crowd will be, fuck yeah, because they get the bass thing and they're not so genre-specific. So... Uh, yeah, it's a kind of you get more diversity when it isn't just a scene of heads into it, and they just demand one sound. The, the, the side that it's maybe a downside for producers is that you don't have that um, what do you call it, like that pot boiler kind of mentality where you're all just stuck in this this one sound and you just push it and evolve it and push it and evolve it and it creates a new scene kind of thing. So for producers, it's less intense. But I think for the people who come to the gigs. It's great. You just get more variety and 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 difference in the sound you hear. So you're lucky in many respects, and and uh, producers are gonna have to just reach a little bit harder. You know, <laughs> are there people making tunes up here? I don't know if there's a making tunes. Yeah. Making oh yeah, there's a couple of small recording studios for sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of reggae gets recorded up here. There's actually a small like heavy metal scene out here. Oh, it's definitely oh, underground. It's wicked. heavy duty underground, but it's here. Wow. Uh, I guess the most public would be reggae right now, right? I mean, like last night, the Jerry Garcia band was playing in Arcata. Wow. With Melvin Seals here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a classic. Kind of slow, you know what I mean? Right. It was a huge, that's like a. It's yeah. still a hippie town at heart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and also, there's another Jim Blyad. The pro problem is in Arcata is it's such a small town. You guys come on Friday and Saturday, and every venue's been packing hard, and every ste venue's yeah. stepping it up a notch. Yeah. So, it's almost like, we, where can we go? But know, I think as the spoiled. scene evolves more, there'll be more diehards, you know. It's just at the moment people are, oh, I love a bit of this and I love a bit of that. But I oh, think yeah. as it moves on a bit, people are going to, those people really into the electronic shit, it's just going to be no competition, you know, they're going to be. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. electronic right now, I was saying earlier maybe, it's almost like if you're into it now, you're two years ahead and three years behind. Because yeah. You know what I mean? Because right now, people who've heard it first might have got into it and then jumped right out of it. Yeah. But the people who are digging it, it hasn't been around long enough, we're just starting oh, to yeah. really yeah. dig yeah. it, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Cool. Well, Teresa, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Next. Freak Nasty, what's up with the dude? <laughs> what's up with the dude, dude?